we meet again at last. The circle is now complete. What's the world coming to? Well, you got a problem with what I did, Anthony? Oh, no, hey, no. Fucking rat, anyway. So family's all rat. Would have grown up to be a rat. Yeah, I'm real sorry your mom blew up, Ricky. Now you're gonna take the fucking thing. You're gonna take the hole. You're gonna do it. I got no fucking line. You're gonna do it. I realized that what was living behind that boy's eyes was pure and simple. Jesus Christ, mister, you okay in there? Ah, put some vintage coffee around here someplace. Have you any idea what the cost of your actions is? What their effect might be? Are you to give them hope? What do you give them? We give them happiness. And they give us authority. on everyone it's bob with cinefellas podcast this is episode number 136 i talked brian petzos about his new movie big gold brick sit back have a listen and figure out just what makes this man tick hey brian how you doing today bob how are you you know i'm living the dream right <laughs> <laughs> i'm jealous <laughs> well i didn't say whose dream and i didn't say it was a good one <laughs> right right yeah so living the nightmare is what i always say yeah, you know, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so I got a, uh, I got the um, chance to check out Big Gold Brick. I got to say, it was extremely interesting. I will take that as a compliment. So, yeah, no, absolutely, please do. Um, I have to say, it felt like a, um, it's going to sound bad, and it, or not bad, it's going to sound weird. It felt like a nice fever dream, you know. Like <laughs> the, the, That's the, right. Uh, I, will, I will take that, man. I, I mean, dreams are a huge influence on me. And so I will take that absolutely. It it um almost reminded me of parts of inherent vice and stuff like that. Like it just the colors, the way everything was shot. It just kept me in. It kept me in the whole time. Oh, that's really interesting. It's funny. Someone else had mentioned inherent vice, which now that you know people have said that, that's really interesting to me, and I will take that all day. No, it's a that's a phenomenal movie as well, and yeah, like. I, I was uh, talking to someone about it. I said, man, this reminds me of, and I kept trying to think, and then the movie poster popped in my mind, and I was like, Inherit Vice. I was like, it's not exactly like it, but it's it's along the same genre-bending film as that one was. Although I got to say, right. this was a lot more dark comedy, and, and I, I thoroughly enjoy a good dark comedy. Oh, I, I appreciate it, man. That, that's, um, yeah, it's a mode that I am comfortable in that makes sense to me. Um, so. So yeah, that's uh, that's great. I you know I guess we're two dark comedy fans here. Oh, absolutely. There's a movie called God Bless America that Bobcat Goldblatt made, and it is one of my favorite movies. And it's a dark comedy to say the least. Yes, I'm I'm actually aware of it, and I'm ashamed to say I it's one I have intended to see and and still haven't. And you've just uh, picked my brain there. So, so thank you for reminding me. Yes. Yeah, you know, kindred spirits here. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So I gotta say, this cast was—I mean, you had a you had a star-studded cast: Megan Fox, Oscar Isaac, Lucy Hale, who may a brilliant performance by her. I mean, she's extremely talented as it was, but for some reason, Lucy Hale, every time she hit the screen, like it just drew me in even more. I mean, all everyone gave great performances. Andy Garcia was great, but Lucy Hale, there was something with her that just kind of resonated with me. So how much did you have, like, how did you know, like, who these people were going to be, the audition process, or did you write with some of these people in mind? You know, I, I try not to write with people in mind as much as I can help it. Um, but what I do, I do keep sort of, I keep a growing, ever-growing list of people in parallel while I'm writing, but I try not to focus too much on it. Um, but the, the, the casting process, uh, happened pretty organically with, with this. I mean, Lucy, it's funny, I was just talking about Lucy and how much I just love her and how great she is. And she's, you know, she was, I, she was the first person I offered that part to. Um, 
and I'm very, very lucky that she agreed to do it. And, you know, I always saw that part uh, of, of hers as sort of the postcard of the film. She is kind of the thing that Emery's character, Samuel, like kind of has to get to by the end of the film in a weird way. And mm-hmm. and she just has such a particular set of qualities to me that it's just perfect for that part. And, and I'm, I'm glad that I, I think you've seen the same thing. And so that's um, I'm, I'm very glad to hear that. Yeah, I was going to use the term uh, destination point originally. Yeah, but I felt like yeah. it was weird to use in, in the context. No, no, it's just, it's just that's exactly how I thought of it. You're you're, you're exactly you're dead on. As, as a comic fan, this was the uh, Ramona Flowers, the Scott Pilgrim. You know what I mean? The one that <laughs> you're jumping over barriers to obtain, you know? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to spoil anything, but I, I really, you know, there is that kind of idea of a, of a happy ending, um, was something that I really wanted to get to. Like through all the tumult, like eventually end up there and I knew she, you know, I, I really absolutely needed to, have that character kind of come into play. Now, we were talking about, um, you know, the the cast and all that. Oscar Isaac seems to be a um, a favorite of yours. Uh, this was the third time working with him. Is there a friendship there? You love his work ethic? Is it both? Is, is it, you know, a it's, it's, both? It's both. Yeah, it's both for sure. I mean, we're, we're, we're absolutely friends, and I think we really like working together. And, and um, I mean, obviously, what's not to like from my standpoint Oscar is incredible. <laughs> I mean, no, it's, it's it's hard to classify him any other way than incredible. So, um, and for some reason he likes bumming around with me on occasion. So, <laughs> I'm I'm very fortunate. Um, but I think there is a mutual respect there, and um, there's a total shorthand. And you know, I tend to write very specifically, and Oscar shows up on set and just delivers every time. He's uh, he is a true true talent yeah i honestly i have yet to find an oscar isaac performance that that, that i didn't love um I know. It's, I know especially again as a comic fan i mean that's moon knight so i'm i'm even more excited for him um no no oh, yeah. i mean that's got, that's got to be something cool for you i mean you've ri- you've worked with him three times and he's obviously loves the relationship you guys have like that's that's pretty cool yeah, I mean, but, look, I think, you know, even 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 with the short films, I feel like, you know, hopefully the short films have shown people a side of Oscar that they maybe haven't seen in some of his other stuff. That's my hope, at least. And and I hope it's the same case with, with, with this film, ultimately, with Big Old Brick. Uh, when I was looking through your other films, I said, oh, Oscar Isaac, oh, Oscar Isaac. And I was like, well, now I want to watch the other two because you guys obviously have such a good rapport. Like, I know you're not writing with anyone in mind, but this felt like you made one. All right. So Oscar's going to play this and you wrote it to him. I mean, obviously he's a phenomenal performer, but I mean, the rapport you two must have now, now it's got me wanting to jump back into your filmography and start, uh, you know, checking out the other ones. I would say check out the short films, you know, I mean, obviously there's, you're dealing with, you know, small budgets and very, very hurried schedules, but I think on their own terms, the short films are, you know, relatively successful on a, on a, on a, from a creative standpoint, and at the very least, Oscar is fantastic in them. So, yeah, give give Ticky Tacky and Lightning Face a look, for sure. Yeah, short films sometimes are the best because those are passion projects. No one does a short film for a paycheck. Like, that's all. Yeah, not at all. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's money. It's money out the window most times. It's a very expensive business card is what I call it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, but it's, 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 a, it's a very – it's a de- deceptively – difficult form um to make something work in you know five to 20 to 25 minutes is it's a it's a real magic trick so i've read the synopsis for the other films and then of course seeing this one there has to be some inspiration that jumped at you for like the gold brick was there something that came along was this a story that was always in your mind or was this something that gradually evolved just looking at random things well there there were definitely elements that have been in my mind for a while but the thing that really kicked the 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 the, the screenplay process off was uh, someone pretty close to me suffered a traumatic brain injury and I'm, i'm i'm chuckling a little bit as i say this and the process of him kind of getting back to normalcy so to speak was very difficult 
Um, and just watching him have to deal with hallucinations and, you know, just, uh, just an, an unbelievably heavy depression based on just literally the, the mind sort of trying to piece itself back together, um, was for me <laughs> inspiration enough for, for a dark comedy. <laughs> So that was my, that was kind of the foundation. I knew I wanted to sort of take it into other places. And of course, I probably project a lot of my own crap uh, onto it. But that was, that was the genesis. If anything, you could tell him that, uh, yeah, well, some of the best art comes from trauma, you know, or, or traumatic events. And, and, you know, maybe once everything settles down, you could be like, hey, you know, this is kind of what, you know, I took it with. But, you know, I mean, there's hope in that. Oh, he, 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 he knows, he knows, he knows. <laughs> I got to ask, um, Andy Garcia, like, the, he's a legend, you know, like, he's been around forever. He's been in every genre. What was it like working with Andy? It was the experience of a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm someone who, you know, was such, as as a child, was such a fan of, of his acting work. And, you know, he's someone that, again, you know, you, 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 you pin the name Andy Garcia onto a bulletin board and you just pray. And then the day comes when you're actually talking to him on the phone about, you know, potentially doing your movie. And it's, it's hard to believe. Um, but that's what happened. And he agreed to come on this crazy ride and threw caution to the wind and trusted me enough to, to, to do the part. And I, as I've said before, I don't, I don't want to place any judgments on the film from my perspective. But I will say I, this is one of my favorite things Andy's done just isolated his performance in this. I just, I just really love him in this movie. Yeah. It felt like a, um, a departure from what I'm used to seeing him as. And that was, I love seeing someone go not so much out of their comfort zone, but out of not being typecasted, but something so out of what he's normally done that it was, yeah, it was refreshing to see. Well, that's, that's why, I mean, I always, like I thought about him in relation to the character and that's what excited me about him playing this character was exactly what you just described. And so the fact that he agreed to just kind of take the dive, I'm very thankful for because it's a really, really special performance. Now, now that you've finished this passion project and you know all this, is there a is there a new project that you're working on that we should be looking forward to in the future? Yes, there is. There is. I've I've, I've just finished my next screenplay. Um, it's quite a bit bigger than Big Gold Brick. And okay. it takes place in the world of television. Um, I don't want to say much more than that, but uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's a humdinger. I'm looking forward to it already. If it's if it lines up with like the story and, and I got to be honest, your imagination and everything that built this intrigued me so much. I was like, yeah, I got I got to watch the rest of this stuff because yeah, like you said, it's just everything out there, and, and I felt like you put it out a whole thing of platter. Right there, and then we just have the viewer, we're, we're sorting through it, going, "Oh gosh, all right." Oh, and now we're flashed, and and all right, now this is it. I love multi stories going together. I love Pulp Fiction. You know what I mean? Just it's a flashback. Now we're here, and then we're here. Like I love, I love that. Well, man, if, if I can give you a cinematic charcuterie board, I am very happy to do so. There you go. You got to use that as the ta- as the tagline. <laughs> 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 I, I, oh, I, man. Too late. The posters are already printed. All right. Well, well, I'll, I'll have it. I'll have it engraved on my heart. Synthetic <laughs> <laughs> charcuterie board. <laughs> that is that's funny stuff, man. Very very funny. Now, is there is there any chance Oscar gets a role or at least a, a cameo? Because I feel at this point, like you sort of need to have him in. It's like a Hitchcock thing. I mean, look, Oscar can do anything he wants and anything I write forever. That's that's an open invitation. I feel like he's the Stan Lee in your movies. Like he's the he needs to appear at some point and say a line and just people go, oh, there he was. You know, <laughs> like everyone. Just well, you, you know, you know man, I will say when it when it gets like that, when it gets kind of like family, it it really makes the stuff so much sweeter. It really does. Thank you so much for talking. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you for the movie. Like I said, I loved it, and um, I'll make sure to be looking out for that next film of yours. Thank you, Bob. I really appreciate it, buddy. All right, enjoy the rest of your day, sir. Okay, we'll talk to you. All right. All right, guys, that was my interview with Brian Pestos. Remember, Big Gold Brick comes out February 25th on demand and digital. Give it a watch. Hopefully you enjoyed as much as I did. So thank you for listening, and as always, cheers. Cheers.